the broadcast. Coach Borino with you. How are you, my friends? How are you, real estate rock stars? It's good to have you. Always nice chatting with you. I always enjoy sharing with you what I know, ideas. Let me fix my microphone so you guys can hear me okay. There you go. Audio good? Video good? Are we good? Yeah? Let me check. Yeah. Audio good? Video good? All right, good. So you can hear me. You can see me. We can get going. Whatever's on your mind, we talk about. I have my cup of coffee and we chat well, for about an hour or so. Discussing what's on your mind, talking about the latest trends in the market. There have been some shifts and changes. We'll talk about that, how that influences you, because 90% of that is really good news. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Any questions you have, please feel free to post them right here. If you're watching us on YouTube, post them in the comments below and I'll make sure I'll answer them on our next broadcast. Arkadiusz with us. Good morning. Lovely to have you. Good afternoon. Since Mr. Dave Keith is checking in. Mr. Derek Redford checking in. Good real estate rock stars. Bunch of good people with us. As a matter of fact, I can just show you. Why am I talking about it? Let me just show you who's with us. And Miss Roseanne joined us from our lovely office. There it is. All good, says Christina. Georgina checking in and wishing good morning to everybody. Jan is checking in. Ben is waving. Waving back at you, Mr. Ben. <laughs> good to have you guys. Lots of good folks here. Uh, Shana checking in. Nice to have you, Miss Shana. All right, my friends. So, let's start with the news. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Right here. Hold on a second. No, that's not it either. Hold on, bear with me. I want to pull it up. I want to show you their article because that will make a difference if I can show it to you. Here it is. Okay, so you guys have seen these. I mean, this is not the only one. This happens to be from MSNBC, recent publishing. Home sellers slash prices, especially in California. Now, this is important. And if pay attention to the headline, especially in California, as you know, and for our friends in California, the market there has been pretty high. High demand, low supply, prices skyrocketing, and things are slowing down in our good Cali. In four weeks ending September 16, more than one quarter of homes listed for sale had a price drop. The supply of home sales increased annually in August for the first time in more than three years. The average rate on popular 30-day fixed mortgage loan is up more than a quarter. So what does that mean? Prices are starting to go down, things are cooling off, and the mortgage rates are going up. Now here, this is important, this part. I wanted to show you this. After three years of soaring home prices, the heat is off the U.S. housing market. Home sellers are slashing prices at the highest rate in the last eight years. Now, you may say, well, okay, Borino. It may be seasonal. We're going into fall and winter. Things sometimes slow down in certain areas. That may be true. But the price reductions that they recorded and analyzed in this article is the highest in the last eight years. So this may not be just a seasonal thing. Now, and the article goes on and on quoting different stats and different things. I'm not an analyst. I'm not an expert on economy. But I've been in real estate for over 20 years. I got my license in 1989 for the first time, if you can believe it. Talk about a shitty time to get into real estate. That was a really bad time. Any of you started that time? Things were pretty rough, right? With 14, 15% interest rates. We used to do wraparounds. Inventory was not moving. Nobody was buying shed. Listings were sitting there for months and months. Price reductions were daily business. Tough. So are we headed for it? Hard to tell. I don't have a crystal ball, but here's what I do know. There have been several articles similar to this one, which is really good news. If things do slow down, and this may be just a little dip, we may come back up. I don't know. Nobody really knows for sure. If I had the answers, I'll be on my yacht in Monaco, chilling, but I'm not. So here's what I do know. Let me go back to our lovely page so I can see you guys. All right. This slowdown will have several ripple effects. One. All the agents who are just, I call them low status agents, you know, the part timers, the people who are just kind of there for a buck will leave. It's just going to be a little too challenging for them. So that's number one. I predict you will have less competition in the next few months. You will see the effects. People will go back to their regular jobs, which to you and I would be a disaster, right? That'd be a curse. But some people will, especially those who are struggling. And God, if you're struggling in this market, trust me, you don't wish for any other market, right? Some of you can attest to that. So that's one. You're going to have less competition, and you may already see the effects of that. 
Two, there will be more abundance of high probability leads, HPLs. We talk about these almost on every broadcast. You want to get your business up, you want to get more listings, you want to help more clients, you want to get paid faster, focus on these suckers. Because if you had a choice, think about it this way. Let's say you, I don't know, door knock, just for an example, and you knock on 50 doors, and you talk to actual 50 people, fine, it's implausible, but let's just go for the sake of math. Would you rather knock on 50 doors, or would you rather talk to 50 expired listings? Would you rather talk to 50 complete strangers that may or may not have any interest in real estate, or people who are fucking doing something already? Think about it. Somebody who's already signed the contract once, somebody who already went through the process one, and somebody who got a taste of what a reality is like if they, in most cases, overprice the property and the property doesn't sell. It can be the best source of business for you. And if things do cool off longer term, we're going to see more expired listings. And some of you actually in the comments below the article when I posted it here on Rockstars already commented, yes, my expires are up. We're up to eight expires a day. Pretty nice. What that means is what? Opportunity for you. So with the right approach, maybe you get my system, the Expired Plus. I'll teach you how to do it. You get a book in the mail. You watch some videos. I'll walk you through it. I'll set it up for you. You're up and running. You can start helping people and taking listings very, very quickly. Expires can be that fast. That was my saving grace. That's what saved my ass. Going from homeless to doing okay. Within 10 months, I ramped it up, bunch of expires. You can do the same thing. So pay close attention to your MLS. And if you don't, subscribe to a system like Espresso Agent. We have a deal with them. Just type in Borino. You can try it for 29 bucks. They will get you, start getting you expires. But whether you get it or not doesn't matter. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just telling you there are tools out there that can help you. But what you need to do is pay close, pay close attention. What's going on? So number one, start paying attention to expired listings. Because if things do cool off, there'll be more properties ready for picking. Sellers who still want to sell, motivated folks who need a more competent agent. You. So that's opportunity number one. Opportunity number two is for sell by owners. Now another high probability lead. Would you rather to talk to 50 strangers or 50 people who tried to sell on their own? Because you statistically know, or maybe you don't, I know, I interviewed the CEO of FISBER, 71% of FISBOs end up listing with an agent. Great opportunity. Now, do you know what the number one challenge FISBOs have, other than, of course, finding a buyer for their house? Do you know what it is? Statistically, at least one quarter of FISBOs report that the number one challenge they face is pricing their property right. So if the market does change, do you think they'll be flexible? Do you think they stay on top of it? Do you still have, do you think they have access to all that data? Of course not. They're civilians. Pricing a home right is a challenge for most real estate agents. Not you guys. I'm not talking to you. The rest of them out there. The wild ones. You know what I mean? The untrained ones, the unprofessional ones, the uneducated ones, the unprepared ones. It's a challenge for a pro. So if a FISBO has to price their home right shit, and especially if things start shifting, they don't watch the MLS daily. They don't preview property daily. They don't go out there. They don't know what the hell's going on. They have other things to worry about. They only think it's easy. It's not. What does that mean? Opportunity for you. You walk in, you talk to the people, you start building connection, you start building trust, you follow the FISBORINO process, and in a few weeks, some of these folks will realize, shit, this is a lot harder than I thought. It's a lot more complicated. I thought we have a lovely house. You've heard that, right? Our home is special. Our home is different. People will flock to buy it. And we're going to save commission. Huh, Martha? I'm a smart one. Not really. 8% of for sale by owners. 8%. Out of all the homes sold in the U.S., only 8% are FISBOs. See, the numbers don't lie. The statistics don't lie. That means it's a great opportunity for you. So it's okay if things slow down. It just means more for you. Because what you have to do is simply adjust. Any of you sail? I'm an avid sailor. I love to sail. I haven't done it in a while since I left California. I used to race sailboats. I used to have a sailboat. We used to sail. California was good for that. We might get back to it. If Hannah's watching, darling, we may go sailing. But in sailing, you cannot go against the wind. That's impossible. You have to be at an angle. It's about 40 degrees or so, depending on a boat. Smaller race boats are more nimble, but it's roughly about 40% or so, veering off. But I can tack. 
That means if that's my point and the wind is coming from there, so if I want to get here and I'm here on my boat, I cannot go this way. That is not possible. But I can go this way and then I tack. And then I tack. You have to do the same thing. And when the wind shifts, you pay attention. You can take advantage of it and simply tack. Adjust your sails. And it's all you got to do. You have systems in place, you have information, you have education, you have motivation. So you simply adjust. You tack your sails. More fizz balls? Yay! Let's set the sails, let's go get them. More expireds? Awesome. Let's talk to people who want to move. Let's explore. Not everybody will turn into a listing, logically. But out of 50, there's a pretty good chunk that will. And if all you have to do is follow the MLS, you're going to notice that big chunk of the expires that expire go back on the market, and many not with the same agent. Huh? What does that mean? Opportunity. So you're going to have plenty of opportunity. You're going to have plenty of chances to help folks who need help, who were in the hands of somebody who didn't know how to get it done or who wasn't aware, or just simply weak to tell the sellers the truth. Hey, the market is changing. Things are going south on us. Things are changing. We need to adjust. Which brings me to my next point. Two things you need to be aware of. One, of course, the opportunities we talked about. Do that. Really do that. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. This is a real opportunity to really have a phenomenal next few months. I mean that honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm being genuine. And if you want my help, come on board. I have systems to help you. I have resources. I have a coaching program called The Path. All that is available for you. So come. Let's do this together. Now, a word of warning. For those of you rock stars who have listings, which probably most of you, I hope, do, a few, stay nimble. Be aware of what's going on in the neighborhood. Stay on top of it. Because the mistake I see even seasoned veterans make very often is they wait too long. They're like, eh, things will get better and we got some showings. Don't wait too long. If you're not getting showings weekly, good, solid, a lot of people come and see the property, a lot of agents showing interest. If you're not getting at least somewhat decent offers, red flag. Pay attention to other actives, pay attention to pendings. What is happening? What you need to decipher is two things. Where is the market going? Is it a temporary dip? Are you going to ride it out? Because that's possible. So you are here. Well, you were here and there's a slight dip, right? It's going down just a little bit. So now, is it going to continue? So you were here. Prices dipped a little bit. You kind of notice a slowdown. Not as many people are coming. There are one listing or two new listings that are priced better than yours. So a little bit of a red flag going on. Now you need to figure out is if you're here, is this the trajectory or is this the trajectory? Is it going to come back up? You need to know. The good news is if you really pay attention, if you know the neighborhoods, if you pay attention to how many homes are selling, is that changing? What is the average price days on the market, which you should know, that's the core skills, care, core competency, you'll fairly easy tell, are we going to slide a little further? Because if you are, the sooner you react, the more service you provide for your clients, the more equity you can recover. Because if you wait too long and you just keep sliding, 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 this time where you should be in reactive mode is money wasted, opportunity wasted. The reality is you don't control the market, you don't control the prices. There's no reason to feel guilty about it and there's no reason to apologize to the seller in any way. It is something that's completely out of their control or your control. But with that said, your job is to be aware and communicate it clearly to the seller. And the reason agents don't is because of two things. Number one, they don't have enough listings, so they're holding on for the dear life to the ones they have. That's one. And two, they're afraid that the seller gets pissed off, perceives them as incompetent, blames them, and wants to lose with somebody else. They think the problem is the agent, not the market. But you can recover from that. Hopefully, you don't need to recover. You can set it up right by clear communication with the seller, authentic but very confident communication from a point of competence where it's not an arm wrestling, it's not a bashing over with a million data points. It's a simple explanation. This is what's happening, number one. Here are the facts. Here is what it means. And this is what we need to do. Did you catch that? This is what's happening. Here are the facts. This is what it means. And here's what we need to do. Because if you set this right, the dynamic you want to create between you and your client is we're in this together. We're on the team. We're here to get this done. So let's figure it out together. You don't pressure, you don't make decisions for anyone, and you don't, you're not attached to the outcome. You simply, as a professional, as a guide, show them the way. 
And the final thing you need to be aware of, so we got the opportunities, we got the existing listings, any listing presentations you go on right now. Be very careful and very skilled when it comes to knowing what's going on and knowing how to communicate it. Those are the two important elements. So that means you have the skill, you have the knowledge, but you also have the ability to present it in a way that's both real, authentic, compassionate, but also from a point of authority, you know what you're talking about. And because the markets are different, the areas are different, neighborhoods are different, the factors are different, you personally need to do the homework without relying too much on outside sources. You must arrive to your own conclusions. Regardless of what MSNBC says, or Realtor.com says, or Wall Street Journal says, or even the other agents, especially the other agents, stay away <laughs> from people who make 30, 40,000 a year. That's bad influence, the bad news. They don't know what they're talking about. Don't take advice from skinny chefs. That's what the French say, and they know what they're talking about, especially when it comes to food. Okay? So if you do want to have intelligent conversation, talk to somebody who's doing a lot of listings, who's doing a lot of transactions, who knows what he or she is talking about. Very important. Is that helpful, my friends? What do you say? Let's take a look what the world out there is saying. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Mike. Hey, Kara, nice to always have you. Always good to have you. Mr. Camille, Patricia is with us. Hey, Mr. Richard. Richard says, please post this session as soon as possible. Can stay and want to watch it. Thanks, Marino. You rock. Richard, it will stay on Rockstars and we will also post it on YouTube as well. The expired program is absolutely sensational and makes very logical sense. Position yourself to attack expires aggressively, says Ben. Absolutely true, Ben. Hold on, let me shrink it just a little bit so you guys can see Ben's lovely face. There you go. Post it this way. Good. So Ben is my client and clearly the system is working for him. If you want to check it out, the URL is expiredplus.com. Go get it. Manny says, I am excited for the cool of market. I am too, Manny. I am too. It's going to be a good change. And it's going to help pros with the right mindset, with the right skills, with the right desire to take action and really improve their business. Colder market is better for you guys. For all the reasons we talked about, there's plenty of opportunity. The market will balance it off just a little bit instead of the lopsided, you know, seller, seller, seller. All the incompetent competition, well, not all of it, but a lot of the incompetent competition will, will be gone. Goodbye, good riddance. <laughs> As my friend Jim Steele says, goodbye, low status agent, right? And you can clean up. Now that will require on your part to be prepared, to understand what's really going on, to have the systems in place and to take massive action. And I'm not joking, you do this right, you said this right, you can have a phenomenal Christmas, no joke. That's totally doable, totally possible, especially if you bring me on board to help you, which I would love to do, okay? Okay. Good morning, Shannon, Mr. Richard. Hey, Todd is with us. Ben says, this is awesome. Thanks, Borino. Derek is enjoying it. Arcadi is enjoying it. Anthony Romero, hola. What's happening, Anthony? Good to have you. Top of day from Manny. All right. All right, my friends. So that's, that's the part one of what I wanted to share with you. Now, Andrew has a question. Hey, Barino, I am aggressively working expires in my market. Once I get in touch with them, I am following up in a variety of ways, including LinkedIn, direct mail, text, call, etc. Do you think every other day is too much follow up if you know they're going to relist? Good question, Andrea. How much is too much? When do you really annoy people? And how much should you follow up with these folks? Excellent question. Well, first of all, kudos for you to work this market because it really is a great opportunity. Now, when I say it's a great opportunity, will they all realist right away? Of course not. Will it take some time? Yeah. It is a long game. How long does it take to convert an average expired? Well, check your MLS stats because here's what's happening. So you have a property. That property expires. And that's today. So now we have a timeline. One of a couple of things can happen. Either this property will never be realistic. They never go back on the market. And there's a small percentage of those who say, well, you know what, fuck it, it's not going well. We can't get our price. We tested the market, it didn't work. We're staying where we are. Or the plans change. 
That's possible number one. Possible number two is they relist either right away or after some time with the same agent. Very often that's a dumb idea, it's a bad move, we all know that, but eh, what are you gonna do? You can't convince them because they have such a bond and strong relationship or it may be a family member, whatever reason it is, okay? So nothing you can do here. Then there's a third group. Nothing happens and nothing means sometimes a day or two, sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a few months. And then they release with another agent. Okay? This is the group you're after. Here is the challenge. When an expired hits the market, you don't know because very often they don't know whether they never going to relist, relist with the same agent. What they tell you, especially on the phone, is very often just an emotional reaction to the position of they're confused, they're angry, they get bombarded by all these people. Although it's funny, one of the agents reported that uh, he called an expired listing in Orlando, Florida at noon. You know how many phone calls that seller received? You want to take a guess? Orlando, Florida, competitive market, expired listing. My man called them at noon. And forgive me, I don't know who it was. I don't remember the name. Called at noon. How many calls do you think that seller had received? You ready? Three. So some of these assumptions you hear, oh, they get bombarded, not necessarily so. Don't believe the myth, especially from agents making 30,000. Skinny shifts, fuck them. All right, going back. They're emotional, they're angry, they're confused. They react. They say, we're never gonna realist. Happened to me so many times. I knock on an expired door, have a pleasant conversation, nice people, I said, we're staying, fuck it. We're not going anywhere, we are not moving, we are, st I'm gonna die here. Strong words, <laughs> right? I'm just thinking, I hope not now. <laughs> I hope that's gonna be later. A few weeks later, I drive by, call a banker sign in the front yard. I'm like, cheap. They just told me they're not going. What is that? Look at that. The reason is emotional. They're just emotionally overloaded. They're pissed off and confused, definitely not trusting anybody. So they need some time to think about it, to cool off. And the secret there is follow up. You keep in touch. So this can take a few days. This can take a few weeks. This can take a few months. How much is too much follow-up? Here is the basic assumption I want you to have when it comes to high probability leads. Until you know, assume that they're motivated, they want to go right back on the market. Because that's sometimes the case. And I don't want to lose the opportunity. I don't want to lose the chance to help somebody and get paid for it. Because I believe, this was always my belief, call it cocky, call it arrogant, I believe that the sellers are in best hands with me. That nobody else out there can do as good of a job for them as I can. That was my basic assumption. So every opportunity I get to work with these people and help them move and make their dream come true is a great opportunity. I want that and I'm willing to do what it takes. Whether it's going to take them days, weeks or months is fine. Even if it takes months. I had some people call me back eight months later because I sent them my expired package, I mailed them some postcards, left a couple of voicemails, did all that stuff that's part of the expired plus sequence. And they would call me back later. Maybe even if I never got hold of them. But I'd rather follow up and not get a chance to list them than drop the ball, lose a bunch of money, lose an opportunity to help somebody because I have a shitty follow-up. Doesn't make sense. All right, so now, the distance between the time they expire and the time they go back on the market, and we're gonna go full multimedia again because we are a full color production company here in Borina Productions. So the time they relist right here, that's a, the big star, do, 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 do. Yeah, the real estate for sale sign. I am such an artist. Look at that Picasso there. <laughs> this depends on two factors. Two things influence that. Two things determine that timeline. The thing number one, of course, is my favorite word that runs your business, and that's trust. Trust. And trust in two things. Trust in real estate in general as an industry and you personally. That's number one. And number two is CD. That's the core driving emotion. That's the core drive. That's the core emotion, the core reason they want to sell and live somewhere else. That's the problem that's nagging them or that's the pull to live on the beautiful golf course in Florida or to move to that lovely cottage in Colorado or to buy that condo they always talked about or get that big house that they always wanted. 
That's the core driving emotion. The intensity of it is motivation. So the motivation and level of trust will determine how long will it take before they go back. If you follow my system and if you get a chance and opportunity to have a conversation with them over the text, over the phone, in person, within a few minutes it should be pretty easy for you to kind of feel them out and determine what's going to happen. And then you assign them a level based on their CDE, level A, level B, and level C. A, that means they're going to release very soon. Maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks at the most. They're the hot ones. These, you want to hit every four days. They should hear from you minimum every four days, minimum. Now, if you feel like these people, they're, it's a matter of days. They're interviewing actively, they're showing all the signs, they've been on the market a couple of times, there were some price reductions. It's all the signs that the seller is motivated, those are your hot ones. Minimum every four days. Piece of mail, some text, personal video, email, call, visit, all the channels, social media, everything. Just like you're doing it. You're already doing it. B should be every seven days. That means a few weeks, maybe a couple of months. Every seven days. And then the C leads, those are the maybes. Every 14 days. Now, with that said, do you have to stay on such an aggressive schedule with the A's if something shifts or you feel like they're going to take longer? No, of course not. You ramp it up. That means you start very frequently and then you ease out. Because by the contact between 5 and 15, they start recognizing four things, which is exactly where you want follow-up to be. You start building trust. And they know who you are. They see your face repeatedly. They see your name repeatedly. They know what you do. They now know how to get in touch with you. They have your email, your phone number, your website, your Facebook. And most importantly, they start developing trust in you. Because through the follow-up process, you start building that connection that's as essential in order for them to say, let's talk. Let's get together. I think you can help us. So those are the windows. Now you have the entire library in the Expired Plus, plus the sequences, the frequency, it's all there. And if you need my help, I'll be more than happy to, to, to walk you through it. But if you read the book, and if you watch the videos, uh, in the book, I think it's page 84, if I'm not mistaken, where I break it down in this way. So go heavy, and then ease out. But I would rather hit them every 14 days, even for months. Because at the end, it's the repetition and the persistence that will win that listing. You make a good first impression at the beginning, especially if you have a chance to meet them in person, then it's just a matter of keeping in touch, keeping in touch, keeping in touch, keeping in touch. And if they tell you stories like, I already have an agent in mind. If it hasn't been listed, it's game on. And the only time I would drop an expired listing from a follow-up, if I'm clear, there's no core driving emotion, these people aren't motivated. They're just gonna dick me around for a year, they don't have to go anywhere. And I'll give you a little script, this will help you, give you a little script that will very quickly help you determine. Now, it is required for you to have a level of trust so they're honest with you. So they don't just blow you off like they do with all the other agents. So here's the script. You ready? You ask them, Susan, question for you. What will happen if the house doesn't sell? What would you guys do if you're here six months from now or a year from now? Would that create a problem? And pay attention. Listen. Listen to not just for the words, but listen uh, the tonality, the energy, watch their body reaction, absorb the entire communication, not just the words. Because if the trust is there, if they trust you, you will be very clear whether you have a motivated seller, even though it may be a few months from now, or you have somebody who would drive you crazy and cost you a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. Okay, so that's the secret. Now, as far as the follow-up itself, vary it. Different people respond to different channels, whether it's personal visits, phone calls, texts, postcards, letters, video, personal videos, all that. So mix it up. All right, Andrea? So you're on the right track and you're doing it right. It's just going to require a little bit of fine-tuning. Now, just a general rule of thumb. If I were to choose between following up a lot and a little, I take a lot. Because I can tell you, I've been teaching this stuff for 20 years. Most agents drop the ball and don't follow up enough. Whether they don't have a good CRM, they're not on LionDisc or any other CRM, there's a whole bunch of them out there. They don't have the sequences set up, they don't have the right materials. 
And very often, they just don't have the balls to pick up the phone and talk to somebody or send them a quick text, shoot them a quick video. That's really all it takes sometimes. All right. Shannon has a good question. How do you avoid your sellers just pulling it off the market rather than lowering the price? Shannon, that goes back to what we talked about earlier. If not selling a house is not a problem, you don't have a seller. If staying in the house for the next six months, 12 months, a year, or forever is an option, and they're considering it, there's nothing you can do or say to motivate them, to influence them. It's bullshit. You've been sold a lie by all these sales trainers. If you just tell them this, and if you pay, tell them visualize yourself in this lovely new resume, bullshit. You can help them, you can guide them, you can inspire them. Those are all the great things you can do, but you can't make them. And if there is no problem that's pushing them out of the house, or if there is no pull, if they're not super excited about that brand new, beautiful new construction that they've been dreaming about, you don't have a seller. So be okay with that. What your job is, Shannon, is sit down with them and have an honest conversation. Open a bottle of wine if you have to, have a cup of coffee and just have a nice, relaxed chat about it. Not a sales pitch, not an interrogation, just a human conversation. Hey, look guys, we control the market. This is what's going on. In order for us to get it sold, the price needs to be 475,000 right now. In order for us to compete with everybody else in the area and in order for us to actually get it sold and appraised based on what's going on in the neighborhood. That's not something you and I control. That's not something you and I can change. It is what it is. We're not talking what the house is gonna, uh, what the house is worth. We're talking what it's gonna sell for. Because in your mind, it may be worth two million bucks. And I totally understand that and I can appreciate that. But the point is not what it's worth. The number we need to know is what is it gonna sell for? And right now, it's going to sell for about 470000 If we listed it at 475, it's going to take us about 35 days to secure an offer, about 45 days to close the transaction, and you're going to walk with about $195,000 in cash after we pay off your mortgage and all the fees. So the decision you need to make and the question we need to answer today is, is that enough to make the move? Do you really want to do it? How much does it matter to you to spend Thanksgiving with your family in Florida, to have that lovely dinner around the turkey, to be closer to your granddaughter and to do all those things we talked about? What do you want to do? Now notice I'm doing all this with a lot of compassion. I'm inserting their core drive and emotion, so I'm, I'm going for the emotion. But at the end, it's them who will make the decision. Because I promise you, if they question your competence, if your competence is questioned, if they question whether you are the high status rock star agent, what they're really contemplating is can another agent do a better job for us and get us more money? You need to make it clear that it's not up to the agent. And yes, there are unscrupulous agents out there. There are assholes and liars and cheaters and shysters who will tell them, I can get you more. They must feel first and foremost that they can trust you, that they're in good hands, that you are their best choice. That's the first order of business. And it hasn't been established at the beginning. There's no magic script or no magic anything that would at the end change their mind because what's in question is you. Does it make sense? So have a little heart to heart. But the way you do that is, is without attachment, without the neediness, without the desperation. Because, like we talked about it earlier, there's plenty of opportunities to get more, and especially motivated clients. Because I can tell you from my personal experience, it bit me in the ass every single time I violated this goddamn rule, is that the only thing worse than not having listings is having overpriced listings with non-motivated sellers. Right? Do you guys agree with that? Am I right? They zap your energy, they're pain in the butt, they're time vampires, they're, they're demanding, nagging, difficult horrible to work with. And one can suck enough energy so you lose three or four good ones in the process. True or false? Has that ever happened to you? Say yes. Happened to me. So many times. And every time I'm like, I should have known better. Ah. Live and learn. All right. Was it helpful? All right, Shannon. 
Mr. Todd has some nice things to say. I have both the Expired Plus and Fisbury and I absolutely love them. I agree with Ben that they are the best investments in this business. Thank you so much for saying that, Todd. I appreciate it. And know, guys, that I don't pay these gentlemen. <laughs> these are just my students who enjoy having my system. So if you want to consider... Now, I also have the, the path. Let me show you. That's if you want to come on board and do and want to get everything, including my help. I have a coaching program called The Path. Go to goborino.com, check it out. The whole thing is there. You can explore what you can get with it, including the FISBO and the Expired program and a whole bunch of others. So thank you, Mr. Todd. Appreciate it, good sir. All right. Ben says, thanks, Todd. I'm only missing the video plus. Some profound info, especially in core influence. Well, get the whole thing if you guys want. Come to do the path with me or get the success plus. That comes with everything. All of that. I'll post some links. Or Roseanne, can you post a link, please, to the success plus if they want to buy the whole package? Would you be so kind? Just put it in the comments. All right. Ben says, Shannon had a seller, took it off the market with someone else. Didn't realist for a while. Stay in follow-up. Even if they take it off, they'll come back. I closed the deal and paid for the program 10 times over. Fantastic. And just because they want to take it off the market doesn't mean you have to burn the bridge with them. Leave on good terms. May get some referrals. They may change their mind. And sometimes life changes. Sometimes something cozy and easy becomes difficult. It can be a job transfer, it can be a health situation, it can be anything, a divorce. God forbid, I mean, you know, the reality of life may set in and they may change their mind. And if you still have that connection and trust, they will come back to you. If they still believe you're their best choice. And you can set that up, you can orchestrate that. That's what Core Influence does. A lot of the communication as a high status confident agent who comes from the heart. You know, this is not like the sales pitch persona shenanigans. This comes from the heart where you genuinely contribute to their well-being, to their, to their future and, and their situation. But you do it in a way that's profitable not just for them and beneficial for them, but for everybody, including you. That's the difference. All right. So good point, Mr. Ben. Thank you for that. Andrea responded, very helpful. I need to do a better job determining CD to put them on the right follow-up. Exactly. That's important. You need to know a couple of things. You ever go to a specialist? You know what they do first, right? Front desk asks you about your insurance, personal information, contact information. Then they take you in the back. There's a nurse that does the basic stuff, right? They weigh you, they measure you, you go, fuck, I gained another five pounds. <laughs> right? Then they take your blood pressure. Then you go into that little tiny room, you sit there for like 20 minutes on that paper thing, right, on the table. Da, 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 ba, da, ba, da. And then the doctor comes in and asks you more questions. And only after that, they review the x-ray or they review the test, whatever, they will say, all right, here's what's wrong with you. You are way too smart. Your brain is super big, so we need to reduce the size so you don't think so much <laughs> or whatever. That's how the professionals do it. And you pay them a lot of money to give you their advice, prescription, and remedy. You take the same approach with your clients. Those out there, not the 32,000 rock stars we have here, which I'm super excited about our group, but the rest of the crowd out there, what do they do? They get a phone call, a sign call, somebody even remotely mentions we were thinking about selling a house. They're like a little poodle. <laughs> Want to list the house immediately, right? Their heart rate goes up because it's a firm phone call, it's three months. And they want to jump all over it. That's how it's done. <laughs> right? I used to do it at first like that. You did too, don't lie. Come on. So, what does a professional do? You ask a few questions. You figure out, are we a good match? What is it they're really trying to do? Because what normal agent, the average agent out there, we should name them something. Like, we are rock stars, we're high status, they should have a name too. I'll have a contest. We'll do a contest. We'll do a contest. If you can come up with a name for the rest of the industry out there who are not the rock stars and high status agents and cool people like us, we'll give some kind of a prize. We'll figure something out. I'll, I'll shoot a separate video about it. I think it'll be fun. 
but you can come up with suggestions now. Anyway, what they do, they settle for, why are you moving? We want a bigger house. Oh, great. Where? In um, Colorado. Cool. How much do you want for your house? 500. Excellent. When do you want to get together? Boom. Done. They'll be like a doctor. You come here and says, Doc, you know what? I have a head headache, bad headache for the last two days. Excellent. Come on in. Let's operate. Oh, what? <laughs> Don't you want to do tests and do some x-rays and shit? You know? But that's what agents do. So what you want to do is spend some time and really analyze, because I promise you, if you really dig deep, it ain't about a big house in Colorado. It is a construct what that house represents to them. That's what the core driving emotion is. And you must know as an expert what it is, how intense it is, and why it matters to them. Because I would much rather spend 20, 30 minutes chatting with the seller, shake their hands and say, thank you so much, I'm not the right choice for you, I can help you, good luck. Then list a property, try to price it right, work my ass off, not, not get it done, then after two very difficult and bloody price reductions and a bruised eye, we finally get it reduced, somebody brings me a good offer, I'm ready to jump 10 feet high, and they go, no. And you're ready to kill somebody. By then you have invested weeks and weeks and weeks of effort, time, energy, focus, money, where you could have been serving other nice agents, nice, nice clients. So that's why it's so important, but there's another reason why that's important. It makes them clear. It helps them get clear. It helps them to understand what the hell are we actually trying to do and why. Why does it matter to us? So you're like a good counselor, where you both go through this process of discovery. Is it realistic? Does it make sense? Can it be done? How soon? What needs to happen? All these things need to be answered. And most importantly, are you two a match? And how intense all that is will determine their motivation. And you must know all that. And they want you to know that. Because the reason we as an industry have such a terrible reputation is people don't listen. Sellers feel not heard. Sellers feel not appreciated. Sellers feel misunderstood. Sellers feel manipulated. You know why? Because nobody listens. All the other agents, you're going to come up with a name, right? Yep, 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 yep. My company, me, 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 all about me. Bullshit. Nobody cares. They don't care about you, and I don't mean it in a mean way, but it's not the truth. They only care how you can help them, how they can get their beautiful big house in Colorado and get the hell out. That's the reality. I mean, let's be honest. Do you really care about me? Be honest. Be honest. I mean, yes, you like coming here, you're entertained, but why you're really here is if you're only here because I can help you in some way. You can get some information, some inspiration, some tools and some strategies and some ideas that will help you grow your business so you can help other people get paid and have the lifestyle you want. If I don't deliver that, then fuck that. You wouldn't be sitting here listening to me right now. That's the truth and I know that and I appreciate that. I still think we're friends. I still think we have a great relationship. But I, on top of it, have to deliver just like you have to deliver. But in order for you to deliver, you need to first figure out what the hell is that, that they want in the first place. What is their challenge? Just like I need to know. What is your challenge? What do you need? How can I help? Same thing. Make sense? So spend a little time. Now, this doesn't need to be a three-hour psychology session, Dr. Freud laying on the couch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not necessary. Within a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, it's fairly easy to tell. But you need to ask some right questions and get some answers and probe those questions and answers to really understand and help them understand. All right. And then, of course, you can use all that during the follow-up. That's absolutely powerful, very influential, super strong. Okay. Shannon says, awesome. I totally agree. I got this. Zach says, oh, yes. Adarsh. I made a great connection with the FISBO. They called me to a list. I was in their office. They said we're to sign, but they wanted three months listing, and my company said no less than six months. Um, so I'm not sure I know what the question is. Adarsh, should you take a three months listing? I would. Now, one thing I can give you, Adarsh, is would they really want is not a three month listing or a six month listing. That's not the real issue. And you, as my student Rockstar agent, need to understand that what they're really questioning is your competence. 
can they trust you? Because they don't want to get burned and list for somebody and get locked in for a six month listing. Now, I appreciate that the company has certain policies. I also believe you as an independent contractor can say, go fuck yourself. I can take a seven day listing if I want to. I can work for free if I want to. This is my business and I can run it the best way I know how and I can serve my clients the best way I know how. And if the brokerage is in my well, then go fuck off, go somewhere else. There's plenty of other opportunities. That's what I did until I found one that fit my personality, the quiet introvert I am. Yeah, Richard Darling is pulling his hair right now. <laughs> my former broker at Remax. Until I find somebody who I click with. But if a company prevents me from taking a good three month listing, especially if I know I can get the fucker sold in 30 days, that's not a good match. But I would also spend a little time with the seller because if they show hesitation like this, there may be other deeper problems. And I would get those out of the way immediately. Number one, seller has the right to cancel my listing at any time. If I don't deliver, if I don't hold off to my promise, if they feel like they're not in good hands, I can't hold them anyway. If somebody doesn't want to work with me and wants to back out, I can't put a gun to their head. Because I believe there are plenty of nice people who appreciate my work, who want to work with me, who are motivated, who need my service. That's one. And two, it's not that hard to really discover what they're afraid of. And you, as a master communicator who is confident, who is competent, had no problems to discover that. And if you need a longer listing, you need to explain to them, look, this is like going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. I need a full tank of gas. What would happen if I'm driving from LA to Vegas, which takes about five hours, and two hours in, I'm going to run out of gas? Nobody's going to win if we need more time. You know what I mean? But in most markets, really, three months should be plenty. So understand that the issue, the real issue, is not the time on the market, it's your competency. It's they, they're still not 100% sure they can trust you. So address the core issue, which is trust. Yeah? Helpful? And congrats on getting the fizzball. That's easy, by the way. It's not hard. Shauna says, so true about unmotivated sellers and overpriced listings. Sucks the life out of you. It totally does, doesn't it? Hey, Monica. She says, good stuff. My war room graduate. Zach says, hell, I still get excited for new listings. It never gets old, Zach. That game never gets old. You can take 100 listings a year and getting that signature in on a DocuSign or a piece of paper is still exhilarating. That somebody says yes to you, that they appreciate who you are and what you can do for them. That level of trust and the possibility of one listing turning into four, five, six commissions, which you can at times, is fantastic. It's awesome. Especially in a competitive market. And we have, what, 1.2 million real estate agents in, in the U.S.? So to be selected is cool. But I'll let you in on a little secret, Zach and everybody else. Once you get the hang of it, all the stuff I teach you, the right mindset, the right systems, the right communication, the right approach, the high status approach, you're going to discover something interesting. There is a boatload of real estate agents out there. But those who do it right, who combine the heart of the compassion and the soul of the warrior, small group. Very small group. You will not have a lot of competent competition. That's the truth. Roadies. <laughs> We're going to call them the roadies. <laughs> Manny, that is a good one. I like that. Manny wants to call them roadies. I think the roadies it is. We, we'll do a poll, but I like that. They're the groupies. They wish they were us, so they're, they're settled watching us rock. That is true. <laughs> Homeless hounds. Yeah, I like that. Bad karaoke. Vagrants. Thirsty paper pushers. Borino, you're a nice guy, but we're in for the money. You're absolutely in for the money, Zach. You better be in for the money. I mean, fuck, come on. It's a business. It's a for-profit business. You better be in for the money. You ain't running no charity. I'm not running a charity. I have a business. I need to turn profit. But here is how I turn profit. Let me tell you a secret about Barino Productions. First, I have to deliver a boatload of really actionable, valuable stuff for free. And I love doing it. That's live, that's YouTube videos, that's all the stuff that I give you guys. Then portion of you, and a nice portion, thank God, and I appreciate every single one of you, Manny and everybody else, Derek, Jesus, I could sit here for an hour reciting all the names. Come on board and become my clients. You get the Fizz Barino, you get the Expert Plus, you come do the path with me, whatever. But those programs have to deliver. You have to, A, of course, use them. 
have to take action, study them, use them, implement them, and get results. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here doing this for 20 years. You follow me? So you do the same. You're in business to make money. That's how you put food on the table. That's how you pay bills and feed your family and build that lifestyle you want. And you don't hide it in front of your clients. Commission is how you get paid. That's your salary. But you first have to deliver results, just like me. You have to get the sucker sold. The deal has to close in order for you to earn your commission. So that requires skill and competence and persistence. But you are absolutely in for the money, sure. Focus on the money because I hear this all the time. Leads, leads, leads. We got so many leads. Facebook, we got so many leads. Instagram, we got so many blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. Leads are good, but that's the beginning of the road. You know how you measure the success? Only by dollars. That's it. Only by dollars. There is no other way. <coughs> Excuse me. See, it's the truth. Only dollars earned at the end of the day will show whether something works for you or not. Commissions to your pocket. Not by leads, not by any of that noise and nonsense. Leads are important and it's a measuring. It's, it's one of those little ticks. Leads, appointments, listings taken, and all that. It's like milestones. But don't kid yourself. At the end, it's dollars. Because you can't bring 2,000 leads to your bank and say, here's my mortgage payment for this month. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? Call the security. You know? So yes, you're in for the money. And I totally understand that. And I encourage you to be in for the money. Now, with that said, I'm not saying you make decisions based on dollars when it comes to serving your clients. You put your clients' interests at first, but you also put your business interest as opposed to that. You know what I mean? So if you fain, face a, solu a, a, a situation where the benefit of your company or the well-being of your company can be at risk, you simply say, I've fired clients all the time. Even now, as my students, I just sometimes feel some of you are not a good match. Some of you are not rock stars. Some of you are roadies. <laughs> not a big group, but occasionally we have to somebody let go. Same with sellers. You fired sellers, I fired sellers, I fired clients because it doesn't protect my company's best interest. Now, I can do it in a pleasant way, high status way. So can you. But you're right. Focus on the money. Yes, absolutely. Show us the money. Yeah, Ben is right. Kathy says, very true. I just lost a listing to another agent who lists the place at the ugliest price at this overwhelmingly strong buyer market here. I feel sad for the seller. She's not going to get rid of the place as her plan. And that's such a disservice, Kathy. I so despise agents who do that, who mislead clients like that. Nobody wins in a situation like that. So please don't do that. Don't overprice listings. You know what it really is? comes down to motivation, the core driving emotion, and trust. If I have a seller who's motivated, I would do them a huge disservice, and I would do a disservice to our industry by overpricing the listing. The reason the agents do that, the roadies, I love that name, Manny. <laughs> I think it's going to stick. The reason agents do that is out of desperation or lack of skill. That's it. They don't trust themselves to get a bunch of good listings. They don't feel they're good enough, or they don't have the means to properly communicate it to the seller. That's it. That's it. Because if I know this place is going to sell for 450, if I price it at 600, nobody's going to win. The buyer cannot buy, the seller cannot move, the other agent cannot get paid, I can get paid, everybody's stuck. The seller is going to get pissed because deep inside, even if you tell the seller, we're overpricing the listing. This price is not realistic, it's not going to sell. Who do you think they're going to blame 30 days later when you want the price reduction? themselves, even though they pick the price, or you as their agent? Who is the asshole? They always blame you. So don't overprice listings. It's a matter of doing a good pre-indoctrination. That means setting up the high status agent from the beginning, strong first impression, walking them through the process before you meet them, making sure you're establishing that you're the credible authority in the process where the listing presentation is the last small piece. That's all you got to do. But here's the thing, and this will help you. This is from the Listing Presentation Plus. I'm just talking about all my programs today, but the hell, might as well get it. That comes with the path, by the way. Chapter 10 is all about how to do this process. 
because it's a process. How to list properties better and price them better. See, here's the thing. You secure a lead, and it can be the same expired listing. So you do it here. Then there's a follow-up period. And that can be a few days, few weeks, whatever. So this is the follow-up. Okay? Then at this point, you set the appointment. Then there is a few days, maybe a day or two, three, four, a week, whatever, from the time you set the appointment to the actual appointment right here. And this is the actual listing appointment. Now, the roadies, the, <laughs> the other agent, I'm just so entertained by it. The other agents think that if I bring a lot of comps, if I use the scripts I learned in 1987 at the free seminar I went to where they got free coffee and donuts, and if I show them fancy graphs and pictures, I will price it where it needs to be. Right? Now, the Borino approach says, if you establish strong first impression at the very beginning, first four seconds, which is about as long as it takes for them to decide, rock star, loser. First four seconds, you're in the running. You do the indoctrination process during the follow-up where you establish your authority, your credibility, and your trustworthiness. You nurture the relationship with them while guiding them through the steps necessary to be qualified as your seller, to really get clear what the core driving emotion is to the process of setting up the appointment, where you are already clear what are these people trying to do, what is their core driving emotion, the intensity of their motivation, all those things have been answered by the time you set the appointment, and they are in their mind already see you as the trusted advisor and a guide, not a salesperson. Then setting up the appointment is just to finalize, this is what's going to happen next, these are our next steps. The listing appointment is the easiest part of the entire process. Because for the lack of the world, by the word, by then they're pre-sold on you. The heavy lifting has been done with your marketing and communication up to that point. And by then they already also understand one very important part. They don't set the price. It is not up to them. And if they're still confused about it, you very gently, but with a lot of authority, explain to them how the price is established. It's determined by the buyer and by the bank. That's it. But because you understand the intensity of their core drive and emotion and how important it is for them to lift somewhere else because they feel better, that's their construct, their psychological move construct. Then it's just a matter of executing these steps in the process. Where Signing the listing contract at the end of this meeting is just a next logical step because this is not a solution. Selling the house is not a solution. Moving is not the solution. What is the solution? Solution is out here. Can you guys see it or am I way too far? It's to feel better. It's to solve the emotional construct problem they have. Being closer to the family, feeling the prestige, peace of mind, safety, there's a whole bunch of them. But that's really their goal and you guide them to that. And that's the process. And this is really what I teach you in the Listing Presentation Plus. This is what we go into detail about. What is if somebody says, Andrea, we like you. We trust you. What is that? And how does that work? And can you influence that ethically, of course, without being a douche? And the answer is yes. All right? So, Kathy, I hope that was, that was helpful. Show us the money! Money says, excellent point, Borino. Good. Nirmala says, just started doing text follow-up to new leads. Is sending a message every three days too frequent? It's not too frequent, Nirmala. There was a study done by an institute, some fancy institute. This goes for emails. If people don't respond to your email in 48 hours, chances are they will not respond. About 90% of the responses come within 48-hour window. Unless there are special circumstances like they're on vacation, there's a family emergency, not many of those. Now, as far as text, Every three days is not that bad with two very important points. One, make sure your texts are beneficial to the seller. Because texting them, are you ready to list, is not beneficial to the seller. But talking about a new listing that just popped up in the neighborhood or talking about a new listing in the area where they want to move to, yeah, that's interesting. So be conversational, be easy, benefit the seller. But as far as the frequency, as long as it benefits the seller in some way. Now I'll give you a secret. Even if you just record a little video and send it instead of a text, even that is great. That works really well. 
You can use that as well. Now, with that said, can you annoy somebody? Of course you can. If you just repeat a marketing message and it's the same boring shit that doesn't engage the seller, not do anything, then don't annoy them. Also, if they stop responding, there comes a point where you're just going to piss them off. So you don't want to do that either. So maybe open another channel. Maybe give them a little breathing room and then follow up with, hey, still got one of, you, you guys still want to move? Is that still in the cart? We'd love to chat. Nice and simple. Okay? What is the best time to send out a text and email message? You know, there have been a bunch of studies done. Some will tell you, or in the morning, noon when they have lunch, in the evening. I don't have any conclusive data that would show. Send it, be done with it, get it done, focus on more. Don't overthink it. Because if they want to move, and if they like you and trust you, whether you text them at 9 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, they will respond. If they don't want to move, it's not that important, or if they don't care about you, if they don't trust you, or worse, they don't know who you are, then time of the day doesn't matter either. It's not that relevant. So don't overthink any of that. Shannon says, as a PATH student, I truly appreciate you. You have helped from distance so much. That's very kind of you to say, Shannon. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. And I love having you guys on the PATH. If you want to check out the PATH, just go to goborino.com. And I will help you. You get all these beautiful systems. I will help you set them up. We have live coaching sessions. We have a big library of all kinds of stuff. It comes with Listing University, all kinds of good things. All right. Keith says, hey, Mr. Keith, the path has changed my business mindset, which has radically changed my business. Best investments I've made, the return on investment is huge. Well, thank you, guys. So many nice comments today about the path. I really appreciate that. We'd love to have you on board. Just go to goborino.com. Do check it out. It comes with all my systems, live coaching sessions, all that good stuff. All right, guys. Time will spend today. Different topics, different things we talked about, but I'm sure it's going to help you. This is a good time to be in real estate. This is a good time to help clients. This is a good time to get out there, find some good leads, follow up with them, start building connection and trust with them, convert them into clients. It's a great opportunity. It is a great time to do it. And you can totally crush it. You can fantastic Christmas and a phenomenal next year. Mindset, systems, and action. Having the right mindset, you got to go in thinking, this is going to be good. I'm excited. I love being in real estate. I love my job. I love what I do and I trust I can deliver a good job for my clients. You trust yourself. That's important. Two, you have some systems in place. So you don't spin your wheels working your ass off without not enough to shoot for. You know what I mean? You need to have some systems, some marketing systems, some skills, some, some tools, like the pre-listing package, all that stuff helps. Generating lead systems following up with them. Those are all systems. And it, we build it on path. It's part of the process. And then action. Doing it consistently. Especially on days when you're not getting the results or you don't feel like working and things just not go very well or somebody was really rude to you or the deal that you were nurturing fell apart right at the end. These are the tests that you have to pass to reach for that awesome lifestyle. But it's a good time to be in real estate. It's a good time to be alive. Life is awesome. This business is awesome. We live in an amazing country where so much is possible. Where you can go on YouTube and you can literally learn like a build a fucking rocket. Rocket science is available for free on YouTube. So if somebody comes to me, I don't know how, bullshit. You stay here on Rockstars, you pay me a few dollars, I'll teach you. You can be a total success. I am 100% convinced of that. Otherwise, why the hell would I waste my time here with you guys? You know what I mean? I trust you can do this. And I trust you can help people and in return be cool to somebody else and get paid and the chain continues. We spread the goodwill this way and make this world a little better place. Rather than posting some heroic bullshit post on Facebook, we take action. And I invite you today, no matter what happened last week, no matter what happened last month, fuck all that, forget about that. Make a commitment right now. I'm going to learn something new. I'm going to deploy and implement and I'm going to deliver a rock star result. I'm going to deliver a great service to my clients. I'm committed to be the best I possibly can in this business. 
Here's the thing. You don't need to be 10 times better than your competition. You don't need to be 10 times better than every other agent. You just have to be a little bit better. Just a little better. That's all it takes. And I'm here to help. So if there's anything I can do for you, do let me know. If you want to come on board, come. I'd love to have you. If not, it's all good. Just stay here and learn here on Rockstars. I want to make sure that our group is a great resource for you to feel inspired, feel empowered. That's why we remove all the negative posts and all the bullshit and all the open house nonsense and all that stuff. We want to keep it focused on how to get leads, how to get appointments and listings, how to help clients make money and have fun in the process. That's why we're here. And that's why I really appreciate you guys very, very much. So if I can help in any way, reach out, post a question here, shoot me an email, sh whatever. Send a pigeon, send a smoke signal. <laughs> I'm here to help. Thanks for being here today. Coach Borino signing off. I appreciate it. Ben, thank you so much. What a nice comment. Thanks, Borino, for practical information as always. My job has been done today. Mission accomplished. Everybody feels inspired. Time to grab a lunch and have a productive day. Thank you, Rockstars. I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Coach Borino signing off. Let's go get him. Bye, everybody.